Thank you. I think I have a new coach with Dr. Curry. All right. So I'm going to talk about some of the research that's been going on lately in Geothermal Technologies Office. And really, this comes out of common challenges that arise in multiple different industries that operate in the subsurface. So here's some examples of those common challenges. Uh, permeability manipulation. So whether you're trying to extract hydrocarbons or heat, everybody wants to produce more fluids out of the ground. Um, well bore integrity, important for safety. So how can we construct wells that reduce the risk of um, environmental accidents or accidents that affect personnel. And the one that I'm most interested in because I work in the exploration team is new subsurface signals. So before we get into that, I can talk about a little bit about the geothermal exploration pro uh, problem and how we explore for geothermal. So this is a volcano here. And you see this is our heat source magma chamber down at the bottom. And the way a hydrothermal system forms, we have a water pocket down here pointed out by the blue arrow. And heat from that magma chamber is going to heat that up until it's blazing hot. And eventually, it's going to get on the move. Heat rises, so it starts moving up towards the surface. And a few things to note here. As it gets up closer to the surface, it mixes with some of the runoff that's coming out of these mountains. And that's cooler water. And it starts moving laterally until it eventually emerges from this hot spring where somebody's taking a dip. Something impor else important to note here. If we go and try to drill an exploration well right here, we're going to have a bad day. We're going to find some heat right near the surface, and then as soon as we get deeper, it gets cold again. They call that temperature reversal, and that's, that's really a failure. We want to figure out how we can find out where this upwelling is, because that's the energy that we're after. So important to remember, while the presence of that spring is a signal that something's interesting in the area that we're after, there's no, really no one signal that's going to tell us where to drill. So how do we get around that problem? So back to what we can learn from oil and gas and other industries. They've developed some pretty sophisticated methods of pulling multiple signals together and integrating those and using that to make decisions. And that process is called play fairway analysis. So here are the steps. We start out, we compile existing data. So we can buy data from, uh, we can get it from federal or state agencies, and we can buy it from people who've also been in the area prospecting for minerals or other things. We determine what kinds of play types are in the area. The play is just the type of system that we're after. So on the previous slide, it was a magmatic hydrothermal system associated with a volcano. But there are other types. So once we've determined the possible play types, we're going to construct risk segment maps. So these are maps that indicate the probability of finding all the requisite factors for us to have a hydrothermal system. So remember, it was we needed a heat source, and we needed water, and we needed permeability pathways to be able to harvest the energy. We're going to look at each one of those individually and estimate the probabilities of finding those. Then we overlay them, and we're going to highlight those spots that have a high probability of finding all three of those requisite factors. And so those are our sweet spots. We call those fairways. So you can imagine a bunch of oil executives probably on the golf course, and they, they remembered these maps, and they look kind of like the fairway on a golf course. That's where that comes from. So when we finally get to our favorability map, out of those sweet spots, we decide which ones we want to follow up on. So these are the ones where there's transmission corridor in the area, and there's uh, the, we can get land access. They're going to let us out there without calling the cops, and that type of thing. This is what it looks like in more detail. That should be pretty self-explanatory, right? I won't get, get into too much detail. <laughs> the only thing to note is really heavy use of statistics. There's probably Bayes' theorem in there somewhere. And combining different signals until we get down to a probability of success down here at the bottom. So what does the result look like when we're done? So here are, the, here are six play fairway studies that we've just completed last year from Hawaii to Washington to New Mexico. And note, we've got some pretty exciting prospects in here. The little boxes are areas that look exciting and are, we're going to follow up on. And that's what's going on this year. Teams of scientists are out in the field collecting new data, and we're zeroing in to figure out where we're going to drill our exploration wells. So what are they up to? They're, so let's go to Hawaii. This is the island of Lanai. And 
This is what it used to look like back in the day. It was all pineapple farms. There's a little bit of development going on. And so they would love to find a geothermal resource that they can develop because whatever we're paying for electricity, they probably pay twice as much because they have to import everything. So here we're doing a magnetotelluric survey. And this is pretty interesting. The way this works is it depends on the solar wind coming from the sun. Solar wind interacts with the Earth's magnetic field and it creates these currents underground, which kind of depend on the electrical properties down there. So we bury these little antennas in the ground and we're going to record those for a couple of days and then put them into a computer and process that. This survey is not quite ready yet, but we have some results out of Utah we can show you. So this is what it looks like. We have a 3D model of the electrical properties underground. And the reason why this is interesting is because certain features that are associated with hydrothermal systems have anomalously high resistivity readings. So if we look at here, these are layers of clay that tend to form around hydrothermal systems. Clays are impermeable, they have high resistivity, and they're what causes these pockets of hot water to be able to hang around on a geologic time scale without getting swept away or cooling off. So up here, this is another use for that. This is super deep. He, look, he's imaging 75 kilometers down. And in that case, he's looking for those magma heat sources like we saw in the cartoon before. So that was high tech. Here's, here's a low tech method. We're still looking for signals of heat. So this, what he's doing, he's basically, it's like a, like a turkey tester that we check our turkey with on Thanksgiving, but it's about seven or eight feet long, and he's gonna drill it down into the ground and record the temperatures. And look, he's found some anomalously high temperatures. They're 10 or 15 degrees, see higher than the other ones. So we're getting excited. We won't drill a hole based on that by itself, but we're gonna integrate it with all of our other data. So I, I love this image. So now we're looking for permeability. We need pathways to be able to get the water to come up and harvest it. What this is, is an airplane has, flying, has flown over. There's an area in Washington, and it scanned the area with a laser. So they call this LIDAR. It's like radar, but it uses a laser instead of microwaves. And I like this because you don't really need a trained eye to see what's happened. This is a lava flow, and you can see that up here is where the, the vinegar and baking soda got mixed, and it kind of runs down and it's right there. But what the geologists are using this for, geologists like to get out and walk around and check out the outcrops and look at the lay of the land. But this area is so dense with rainforest, they can't do any of that. I talked to the lead scientist, she said it was kind of like the Predator movie, because it was jungle and you couldn't see anything. But with this uh, LIDAR, you can actually strip off the trees and see what the land looks like. They're actually looking for faults. I, I'm not sure if I can spot the faults here. Maybe this is one up here, but fault density is an indicator of permeability. Okay, so this is seismic surveys, so another indicator of permeability. You may be familiar with the typical seismic surveys used in oil and gas where we kind of thump the ground and we listen for the echoes and the, record those echoes and that creates a, an image of what it looks like underground. And that doesn't work so well in geothermal because the rocks don't have so many layers. It's a solid mass. So what we're doing here is instead of thumping the ground, we're just going to set up an array of listening devices and listen real quiet and try to pick up the natural signals coming out of the ground. So this is in Nevada. And that, up here is the Black Rock Desert where the Burning Man Festival comes. So they probably can't record during that, but we'll pick up some weird stuff. But, <laughs> Here's another one. This is also in Nevada, and this is what the instrumentation looks like. So you got a little pointy deal that sticks in the ground, and that's a sensor that's picking up noises. And then the little boxes, we have a recorder, and we've got a GPS. So the sensor knows exactly where it is, and it knows exactly what time it is from the GPS, too, which is important, because it's the little differences in when all the sensors hear a noise that allows you to figure out where the noise came from. It lets you triangulate and figure out where it is. So this is another one. What's new about this, I think this is the first we know of in geothermal that has an array this size. So the previous one was 1,302 stations. Usually we do a few dozen or maybe 100. This is 1,300 stations, and each one's recording six channels. So we have like 8,000 channels we're recording. A lot of terabytes of data. So this is, pop this is possible recently because of improved computer power. And this is what the result looks like. So this is preliminary. But if you look at some of these areas, we can see there are areas emitting quite a bit of noise. 
that noise comes, you know, the earth turns, the moon goes over, and it causes, pulls on the crust, and it's like creaks and groans and noises coming out of the ground, like an old house when it's windy. Those are all signals that things are slipping and moving, and that's a good sign because that's what's going to allow the water to come up for us to get at. So we hope next year to be able to probably drill one of these. We'll see what happens. But this is going to get combined with a magnetic survey like we talked about before. So before I go, those are examples of what we, we can pick up from oil and gas. What we're getting started this year in a big way is something that GTO, Geothermal Technologies Office, is working on that oil and gas can probably pick up and use. So we talk about wellbore integrity. This is a wellbore, and we see these are different failure modes. These are ways that, that this wellbore can leak, different pathways. And this is what happens when those leak. It can be pretty catastrophic. This is uh, Deepwater Horizon, and that's the Aliso Canyon well. So we're onto this because the downhole conditions in a geothermal field are probably harsher than anywhere. It's super high temperatures, super acidic, very corrosive uh, fluids. So this year, we're just starting to get into research to, to develop technologies that will allow us to identify a problem before it happens. So we'll have sensors and um, diagnostic tools that can go down the hole and do an ultrasound down here, like the doctor does on your tummy, and spot these, spot these problems before they happen. Or what about embedding sensors in the cement or behind the casing that can talk to us and relay information about what's going on down there? And that's what's going to help us ensure quality and prevent these kind of accidents in the future. So I'll just end with that. Thank you all for listening.